the earth is the Lord and everything in it. So you're more of an owner than a renter. And if you think of the attitude of an owner versus a renter, we take more care of it. Right. And so if that's the case, if, if the owner of the earth is going to take care of it more then I want God to be the owner of everything. I want the earth to be the Lord's. I want him to take care of that. And I, I, I think, I think that's a powerful statement because I think you want God to, to own us. Um, and then going to verse two, for he found it on the seas and he established it on the waters. Basically other translations say, says um, uh, he, he made the foundation and um, you know, showing us that, that God is the master planner. And um, and it continues who, who can enter into the, the mountain of the Lord, who can enter into his presence, who can stand in his holy place. Um, only those who have clean hands and a pure heart, clean hands. Let me say that again, clean hands. It's like, wow, talk about timing, like coronavirus, right? Like all we've been doing is cleaning our hands, washing our hands. I've, I, like in the past two, two months, I probably washed my hands more than I have like my entire life. Okay. <laughs> Slight exaggeration, but even the world knows how important it is to clean their hands and wash their hands, right? It's like you've got to, that's what we tell everybody, right? Um, wash your hands, wash your hands. And so they take this very seriously because there's a virus going around. Well, let me just be, you know, all pastoral about this. Like there's a serious virus going around in our hearts, called, you know, called sin. And, and we need to take washing our, our spiritual hands seriously. Like this is like Hi was saying, this is hopefully this is a wake up call. This is a call to, um, you know, to like, hey, we've got to wake up and, and we've got to wash our hands. And so, um, you know, hopefully that image can stick with us, you know, for a long time, washing our hands, coronavirus, viruses, disease, wash our hands. Well, it's got to happen in our, in, in our hearts and our, our spirit. Um, and um, another image that reminded me is when Pilate, um, and this is fresh because of, of the Jesus musical the other day. Um, there's a scene where Pilate washes his hands and he says, I'm done with this. I'm, I'm, I'm separating myself from, from all of this. And that's another kind of image of washing our hands that, I, you know, I'm just going to separate myself from whatever this is. And when we wash our hands, we're separating ourselves from, um, from sin and from the world. And um, yeah, so who can, who can enter into this, the, the holy place of God? Those with clean hands and a pure heart. Um, to, to jump down to um, verse uh, three and through six, all of these things, um, it, it just seems impossible, right? Um, I, I read verses three through six, and it seems like the only person that can actually do this is someone only through Jesus Christ, only through Jesus. And um, like, how can you do that? How can you enter into, how can you have clean hands? How can you have pure, pure heart? Like, how can we receive this blessing? Um, it's only for those who are in, in Jesus. And to end the Psalm, you know, like, yeah, lift up your heads, oh, you gates, you ancient doors. Um, it's, it, it's, it's, it's really old language. Um, but I, I, I picture an image of these big, heavy doors, these ancient doors, and basically open up, but these doors are so heavy and it takes a lot of strength and courage to open it up, but we've got to open up these heavy doors, these big heavy doors so that the King of glory may come in. And so it's a call to let, let God in, let him in, open up these heavy doors, whether it be our laziness, whether it be our, um, uh, whatever it is that's, that's heavy on our hearts. Like we've got to open it, let him in. And then, uh, the statement, who is this king of glory? It, it says it a couple times. And so who is this king of glory? Um, of all the descriptions of, of king of fill in the blank, he uses king of glory, right? He could have used, who is this king of the world? Who is this king of the people? But he's the king of glory. And if you know anything about glory, glory is huge. And yet he's the king over this huge glory. Uh, scriptures in the Old Testament talk about glory of being a weight, you know, being heavy, that this is a heavy thing. It's a huge, heavy thing that, um, that the glory is. And so who's the king of this glory, this heaviness, this weight? Well, it's, it's the Lord strong and mighty, the Lord mighty in battle. And he, he fights for us and he battles for us and he's strong and he's mighty. And it's kind of like, who is this guy? You know, who is this king that raises the dead? Who is this king that heals the sick? Who is this king 
that prophesies? Who is this king that exercises demons? Who is this guy? This is crazy. And it's a declarative statement. He is strong. He is mighty. He's mighty in battle. He is the king of this huge glory uh, that is his. And so, um, yeah, a lot of songs, as Pastor Mike pointed out, have come from this. Um, and it's, it's, it's one of those things that maybe it's because it's a very cornerstone um, psalm. It's one of those things, psalms where you just stand firm on, on, and, and with your shoulders back and you just begin to declare the truth. It's one of those um, powerful climactic psalms of we, we, just, we just declare that the earth is the Lord. Everything in it is his he built the foundation before the world began. He is the king of the mountain. Who can enter? It's only those with clean hands and a pure heart. Who is this king? He's the Lord, strong and mighty, mighty in battle. Who is this king of glory? Open up you, you gates, you ancient doors. Open it up, open it up, and let the king of glory come in. Um, hallelujah, amen, and amen.